My daughter really uh, loves the school here, and I can see why. Today, I really feel like I'm almost there. I know it's a long journey for me. This group is really important to Sanford because it, it helps to fill the need, whatever that need is. But out of all of them, the ones that have it combined with the beautiful landscape and historic architecture, I think Sanford is second to none. This is Samford University, and you're watching the Samford Chronicle. I'm Brad Radisi. You know, with it being October, fall-like weather has swept right onto the campus. But before Halloween closes us out, we had a special treat to start the month. I'm talking about Family Weekend. More than 1,500 friends and family were on campus. We had folks from all across the country. We had family, football, and great food. And for the loved ones, seeing Samford's atmosphere and community they couldn't be happier. My wife came up here before, but uh, it's everything she said it was. Uh, my daughter uh, is enjoying it and really uh, loves the school here, so, and I can see why. Well, it's confirmation uh, for us, but it's also great that our son is excited to see us. <laughs> uh, in that, um, you know, along you know, with his friends, he introduced us to, to some friends last night, and so, um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely confirmation that we made the right decision. We couldn't be happier that our daughter came here. And we're in Tuscaloosa and we're all, we, Mitzi and I went to the University of Alabama, but uh, we couldn't be happier with Sanford and, and uh, our daughter being here. Another important part to this weekend is the faculty and family meet and greet. With Sanford having a 12 to 1 student to teacher ratio, professors, well, they know their students. I mean, I went to a large university. We had 500 in my class. My professors didn't know who I was. Uh, you know, I'd go visit them after hours and, you know, if they're there and not really have the opportunity to talk to them, but Sanford's definitely different. Uh, you really do have the opportunity to talk to the professors and find out how classes are going and uh, how your student's doing. Parents also got to see the new Health Care Services Center. It's St. Vincent's at Sanford. There's three examination rooms, a treatment room, a triage, and a lab. Also, a physician is on campus three days a week. This seems like a regular doctor's office on campus, and I think that they're excited to know that we're able to provide that level of care for them. Um, we've had very positive feedback from our parents as well. Shawna Yelton, who is our PA, uh, people are well familiar with, is an outstanding clinician uh, with the time I've worked with her. And to have the opportunity to have a physician here as well for uh, both the students and the adult patients, uh, I think is an advantage. Now here at Samford, you don't have to look too far to find some support. And that's exactly the job of the Samford Auxiliary. And the ladies in their opening luncheon unveiled a new name, Legacy League and Auxiliary of Samford University. And while the name's changed, this group's important purpose hasn't. We thought it was time for a fresh new name, a new identity, but with the same mission and purpose. And we did like the idea of updating it to more what the auxiliary has been doing recently, which is the raising money for scholarships. We like the idea of leaving a legacy. This group is, is really important to Sanford because it, it helps to fill the need and uh, wh whatever that need is. Historically, uh, we've done everything from uh, furnish dorm rooms and uh, provide landscaping. Uh, to, in more uh, recent days, providing scholarship money. So that's, that's where the greatest need is these days, and that's what we try to, uh, to do. The ladies currently have a $1.5 million scholarship fund that supports 18 endowed scholarships on campus. And how about the good news for two Sanford McWhorter School of Pharmacy alums? Donnie Calhoun and Deanne Mullins are on the executive committee for the National Community Pharmacists Association. We're the only school that can claim two on that board. And while Donnie and Deanne are from the class of 87 and 93, this is the class of 2015. It's McWhorter's white coat ceremony. These students are taking another step in their career of pharmacy. I've longed for it since I was a child and my parents have been very encouraging to me. And today I really feel like I'm almost there. I know it's a long journey for me but I feel today I'm already in it, and that makes me ready to work harder. I think one of the things that really has drawn me to pharmacy is just a great way to um, serve people in the community. Um, like she was saying, that we get to see them on a monthly basis, and we really get to help them and teach them about their medications and about what's going on. 
And speaking of students taking steps in their careers, Samford's Brock School of Business held their inaugural rite of passage ceremony. For upperclassmen, they get to see the future. To the new students coming in, I would definitely tell them to take advantage of the professors and the faculty that we have in the business school. Um, they are what has made my experience what it is, and um, they really equipped me and prepared me for the world to come when I graduate in May. And so my piece of advice would, for them was just to take advantage of the opportunities that they have here. And that brings us to news briefs. As Sanford's Cumberland School of Law gets some great news, they're in Princeton Review's best 167 law schools in the country. And speaking of law, Alabama's Supreme Court and Court of Appeals heard cases in the Wright Center. More than 800 visiting high schoolers got to see the justice system at work. And hey, it's been a busy month for Cumberland. They hosted another event, this one dealing with the 2010 Gulf oil spill. An expert panel led by Alabama Attorney General Luther Strange discussed this historic case with lawyers and future ones here at Sanford. So are we much different than ancient Romans? Well, the Davis Lecture Series heated up with Lure of the Arena. More than a thousand people came to see Garrett Fagan compare watchers of ancient gladiators to current fans of combative sports, including American football. Also this month, Sanford was the proud host of the 21st annual National Lilly Fellows Program. More than 150 people attended from 96 schools. This year's topic, reconciliation of history, literature, and music. The Lilly Fellows graduate program seeks to strengthen the quality and shape the character of church-related higher education institutions. The arts here at Sanford are in full swing as music and theater are entertaining this campus. First, Grant Wilson, a Sanford alum and professional tenor, lent his time and expertise to future performers. He credits his time here at Sanford as the groundwork for his career, and he's happy to share a little of his to help. Trying to think back almost 40 years when I first came here and um, thinking about how much people helped me over all of those years. And then they just try to say a few things to, you know, maybe rattle somebody's brain a little bit. Because learning how to become a singer is just a long process of a lot of people giving you information and taking care of you. Outside of performing, Grant is a faculty member for the University of Maryland School of Music, working in the voice and opera department. And the Choral Vesper series continues. Seven concerts combine the university's sacred spaces and Christian mission with music ensembles. You can catch them at Hodges Chapel and Reed Chapel here on campus. And music wouldn't be music without an orchestra. Sanford Orchestra's season has begun. One new face though, director Brian Villunis. He's new to campus, coming to Sanford from Arizona State. And Sanford Theater presented a Pulitzer Prize winning play called Piano Lesson. It was presented by first time director and Sanford student, Jordan Whitehead. It's a completely different process because normally I'm a stage manager and directing. Um, my cast members look at me to show them guidance and give them depth into to the purpose of their words and their meanings and, and, and helping them share my vision on stage. So I, I felt very humbled that they trusted me um, and valued my opinion in helping them develop their characters and, and I hope that people see what I see when they look at the show. Up next for Sanford Theater is White Christmas. It's the department's biggest play of the season. And with it being October, it was only fitting that Sanford students got a sneak peek at the feature film October Baby. It was written and directed by Birmingham's own Irwin Brothers. And outside of being a great film, we took special interest since scenes were shot here at Sanford. There were exterior shots and shots inside the library and Wright Center. Now the film is in limited release now. It goes nationwide in the spring. I caught up with director Andy Irwin. I know pretty campuses because my background is in, in sports. Right. And so uh, I've, I've been to pretty much every campus in the SEC. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was like, uh, but, but out of all of them, the ones that, had, that combined just the beautiful landscape and uh, just the historic architecture. I think Sanford is second to none. And time now for our alumni story and we dial back to 2005 with Joel Scott Davis. He was in town for the Lilly Fellows Conference taking a break from his duties at Masters College. 
it's great to now be back here on Sanford's campus as a Lilly Graduate Fellow, someone who's been a part of the Lilly Graduate Fellowship Program, and to be here to present on a documentary that I scored, Mississippi Remixed. I devoted the summer of 2009 to scoring the documentary, and I had about an 8 to 12 week time frame in which I went through and sketched ideas, put them together, recorded them, performed them, and so it's a great privilege to be representing this film. Uh, it's funny now to realize that a few years ago I was here working on step same shows, and now to sort of move forward into writing films. It was great. I, I told the director yesterday that Stepsing was maybe my first time to have to have that collaborative relationship with other directors and people who had input. In many ways I see myself as just someone who's attempting to carry on a legacy that was passed on to me by my professors here at Sanford. It's been quite a great journey and that's why it's really special to be back here at Sanford's campus because for me this is where it really all started. And we got to hear Joel's music in Mississippi Remixed. The documentary was just screened here on campus. Well, folks, that's a look at October here at Sanford University. Be sure to check us out next month for the November edition of the Sanford Chronicle. Till then, remember, go to Sanford.edu for the latest news. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Till next time, I'm Brad Radisi with the Sanford Chronicle.